Coming up on today's San Francisco 49ers report by Chat Sports. Hope all of you out there having a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. Will the Niners cut running back Elijah Mitchell? We'll dive into that. And it appears as though Kyle Shanahan not happy with the NFL schedule makers, with the Niners having a historic rest disadvantage on the 2024 slate. Let's begin here with story number one, and that is the future of Elijah Mitchell in a Niners uniform. And we've continued to talk about this here on the show. Is Elijah Mitchell on the roster bubble? You pose that question and you think about it to yourselves. Mitchell has been constantly injured in his three years in the National Football League. He certainly exceeded expectations ever since being a late round pick a few years ago. And since coming into the league when healthy, he's been able to produce. But you also think about some of the moves that the Niners have made, which could signal the end for Elijah Mitchell, or at least, at the very least, their concerns about him being able to stay healthy. One of their moves just happened at the end of April, trading up to take running back Isaac Garendo, who has just a fascinating profile as far as his build and his speed, physical 4-3, 40-yard dash guy. You know the saying. You can't make the club from the tub. And too often in three years in the NFL with the 49ers, Elijah Mitchell has been off injured. And it's certainly an issue because teams want to know that they can count on a player to be available. And Mitchell has not been available enough. His game's played by year. Rookie year, he was awesome. Still only played 11 games with 10 starts. Expectations for him going into 2022. Injured again. Five games. One start. And then in 2023, this past year, 11 games, one start. Now, a lot of people have realized and forgotten about Elijah Mitchell, and they've realized how special Christian McCaffrey is, which has kind of hidden the fact that Mitchell hasn't been available to this football team because of McCaffrey's brilliance and how good he's been for this football team. But you look at those games played by year, and that's not good. And you think about the moves that the Niners have made at the running back spot specifically ever since they drafted Elijah Mitchell. They had concerns about the health in 2022, and because of that, the overall production. So at the near halfway point, of the 2020, 2022 campaign, they traded for Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey runs for 2,000-plus all-purpose yards, top five in MVP voting, NFL Offensive Player of the Year. And then what do the Niners do? They move up in the draft to take Isaac Garendo out of Louisville due to the injury concerns with Mitchell. But let me also throw this out there. To me, Mitchell did not physically look like the same player in 2023 that we saw in previous years. He looked a step slow. He looked a little bit hesitant. It's not to say he can't come back from those injuries and get back to that 2021 form, but even if in his best year in the NFL, Elijah Mitchell's still a player who was even injured as a rookie. This isn't a slight on him as a football player. Unfortunately, the reality of the NFL, which stands for the National Football League, but also not for long, is this. Some players are durable, some players are brittle, and Elijah Mitchell might fit the latter category. You look at his career numbers up to this point. As a rookie, 207 carries, 963 yards, 4.7 yards per tote. If he plays more than 11 games as a rookie, he's running for more than 1,000 yards in his first year at the NFL level. That's hella impressive. Year two, a lot of expectations for him, but he only plays those five games. And the thing with his injuries He's had a bunch of injuries, knee, concussion, hand. He's just been banged up in multiple parts of his body. 6.2 yards per carry, really good. 279 yards in that sophomore campaign. And then this past year, very limited as far as his opportunities to run the ball because of injuries and McCaffrey being a stud. 11 games played, 75 carries, 3.7 yards per carry. That kind of backs up my concerns of him lacking that pop with 281 total rushing yards. His career numbers up to this point. When you translate that to a full season, these numbers would be awesome. And we'd be talking about Elijah Mitchell's being yet another running back under Kyle Shanahan who's been highly productive 
But again, those injuries just snake bitten him a little bit. 327 carries, 1,500 plus yards. The yards per tote really good at 4.7 with nine touchdowns. Let's show our poll question for today's show. And I want everybody to answer it down in the comment section right now. Will Elijah Mitchell make the 53-man roster? M for make, C for cut. Our reason we're talking about this is because Bleacher Report put together a list of players who could get cut by all 32 teams in the National Football League. And they were some of the more marquee players on every single roster who could be let go. Their choice, their selection for this Niners team, Elijah Mitchell. Here's what Bleacher Report had to say. Elijah Mitchell soared into the NFL with 1,100 scrimmage yards and six total touchdowns as a rookie. Injuries limited him to five games in 2022, and he again held a backup role in 2023. San Francisco could cut Mitchell, moving ahead with some combination of Jordan Mason, Patrick Taylor, and rookies Isaac Garendo and Cody Schrader. Cody Schrader, a player who we have not yet talked about on the show. He led the SEC in rushing last year, the Niners picking him up as a UDFA, and football coaches and people who love ball absolutely love Cody Schrader for his work ethic, how he keeps his legs churning, his toughness, and his story. He was a D2 player who then walked on at Mizzou, earned a scholarship, and then he led the best conference in college football in rushing. I think he has an opportunity to make this team. And the fact that the Niners always have a fullback on this roster, in this case, obviously, Kyle Juszczyk, and over the last several years, Kyle Juszczyk, puts them in a little bit of a roster pickle because they might have to cut bait with the running back. Christian McCaffrey is, of course, going to make the team. And then there's going to be a competition for RB2 snaps in general. And who makes this team between Elijah Mitchell, Isaac Arendo, Cody Schrader, and Jordan Mason? Interesting conversation there and something we'll continue to monitor as we look ahead to roster at cutdown day later this calendar year. If you want a Ricky Pearsall jersey, he's going to be rocking the number 14 for San Francisco. You can get yours today at chatsports.com slash Pearsall. He's off to a good start in rookie minicamp as well as OTAs. The footwork, the route running, all on display. It's chatsports.com slash Pearsall. We'll put that link down below in the comment section and in the description of this video. Story number two. Is Kyle Shanahan unhappy with the NFL and its schedule makers? Shanahan admitted... He wishes the Niners did not have such a great rest disadvantage. Here's what he had to say this week from Niners OTAs. I know what our preference would be, but you never know whether that affects you or not until you get there. And there's a lot of things that go into the year. Lots of things that can hurt you on the schedule. I'd rather it be a different way, but there's a lot of things that could be worse too. The line that sticks out to me there. I know what our preference would be, and then on top of that, I'd rather it be a different way. Kyle Shanahan knows it's not ideal to have minus 21 days as far as the rest disadvantage. That is tied for the largest rest disadvantage in the NFL since 1990. And back then, they didn't care about player safety. Nowadays, they're supposed to care about player safety, yet some teams are playing three games in 10 days on multiple occasions during the 2024 NFL slate. And you compare the Niners, number 32 in rest disadvantage, to the Ravens, number one in rest advantage. The Ravens are at plus 16. The minor, uh, Niners, excuse me, minus 21. That is a 37-day difference. So you think about the football season, right? Regular season starts in September, October, November, December, and then it runs into January. So four plus months. And here you have Baltimore with more than a month rest advantage in an 18-week schedule compared to the Niners. Does that sound fair? I don't think it is. Of course, is it everything? No. Is it something Yes, the two teams that met in the Super Bowl last year, San Francisco, Kansas City, were first and third respectively in rest disadvantage. But football is a physical sport, so you can't act as though this is absolutely meaningless. I think Warren Sharp of Sharp Football Analysis is one of the best in-depth football analysts in the game. He's the best analytical analyst in the game. 
and he shed some really interesting insight on this Niners schedule here. Let's run through it. There were three games that he looked at where the Niners had a rest disadvantage last year that really popped out to him. The game against the Bengals in Week 8 gave Cincinnati plus eight days of rest edge as the Niners played on Monday Night Football on the road, by the way, in Minnesota Week 7. Thus, the 49ers were coming off a short week road game with reduced rest while the Bengals were off a bye. The game against the Browns before that in Week 6 put the Niners on the road against the Browns team coming off a bye. The game against the Seahawks in Week 14, late in the season, when Seattle was off a nice mini-bye, having played Week 13 on Thursday night football and obtaining a plus three-day rest advantage over their division rival in Week 14. The results of those three games, this is where I have to stop you if you tell me it doesn't matter. The Niners went 0-3 against the spread and lost against the spread by 32.5 points combined, despite being favored by 14.5 nine and a half, and four and a half points in those three games. They also went one and two in those games. So you can see where Kyle Shanahan is coming from, why I've talked about it here on the show, and why the players are like, well, hold on. The NFL is claiming that we care about player safety, yet doesn't seem to be the case. Does the NFL hate the Niners? I don't think they hate the Niners, but some fans have brought up that question. Why for yes and for no? Thanks for watching the show, and don't forget to subscribe.